This program is not for children. If you're under the age of 13, get the hell out of here. From the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Kissel. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Minefield. That's Keith over there. And that's Gary. And we are here to talk about some nerdy nerd nerd stuff. And today, of all days, the minefield in our name kind of fits. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on what I refer to as Keith today. Pull the trigger. <laughs> pull that trigger. Yeah. Fucking loaded, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, for those that haven't really been paying attention very closely, uh, Gary and I have been talking since we started the show about corporate entertainment and how it has really uh, taken how it has really taken over in the entertainment industry over the last twenty years. Uh, not that it hasn't been a part of it, but it's really, really become more of a thing that a lot of non-Hollywood types are starting to understand. And at this point, um, we have seen things like uh, everything going on at Sony uh, with Spider-Man and really with Sony Pictures as a whole when the, their, their, the head of Sony decides that Sony Pictures needs to go. So you've had them on the market. You have everything that's happened with Fox. Uh, everything from, you know, a lot of uh, uh, incidences behind the scenes, starting with the making of the very first X-Men film, all the way up to Fox basically going out of business and being sold to Disney. And then, of course, the ups and downs and trials and tribulations of Warner Brothers and Disney itself. All of this has brought us to this moment in time with the pandemic. Uh, and now we are seeing something that I think many people who didn't live through the 80s have probably have never seen, which is a bunch of corporations just basically having enough and have decided, you know what? It's now time to clean house. And so a lot of people are about to find themselves minus a job. And some so, of them already have, because that's the story that started this conversation today. And I'll go yes. ahead and throw it up on screen. There we go. So Deadline has gotten rid of uh, some top executives at Warner. Warner, Warner Warners have gotten rid of some top executives there. By and, order of uh, at t Yep. And these are people who, uh, as I've been hearing, these were people that were pretty much on the line anyway. Uh, this was one of those things where it's not a complete surprise, but it's happening now because everybody's expenses, the bills are still coming due. Uh, the pandemic has not really been kind to a lot of business people. And you can't hold a lot of this stuff off anymore. So decisions are being made based solely on the one thing that corporations really value more than anything else, which is profits. You are starting to see all of this hurt profits. So and, you know, it's, like, that, it's it's almost like that uh, video I showed a while back. I really love this video, so I want to show it one more time because this is what's happening. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. I'm sorry, I just love that video. Um, it's a good video. Uh, it, it, it pretty much sums everything up. And uh, again, uh, Warner Brothers, I know we keep talking about that. I mean, they are the big story of the moment. Warner Brothers is basically just doing, uh, well, I shouldn't say Warner Brothers. I should say AT&T is just doing what they threatened to do since the very beginning. They are not doing anything any different. They want to make money. As you and I have both said, we keep telling people, 
AT&T is not doing anything out of the kindness of their hearts. They want to make money. So when you have people step up with some dumb ideas, <laughs> which has been got pretty no much everything over the last 10 years, really. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. like the last decade, it was just chock full of bad, bad ideas that were double down, triple down, quadruple down. They just kept like, you know, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to fold. And and of course it's easy to do that when it's not your money. That's right. And this is the lesson that Fox had to learn. Okay, Fox Fox went out of business. You know, you had a lot of people that were just screwing up. Yeah. And eventually, you know, you reach a point where uh, the people that actually run everything, uh, the bankers, step up and go, "Hey." Uh, where, where's my money? Yeah. Where's my money? And eventually, you got to cost something up. I, so, I'm, not, uh, I'm not only we got paid to create this crap. No, no, no. <laughs> Other people are going to get paid from selling the stuff that you make. Oh, I didn't know we had to sell it. Huh. Huh. <laughs> so, this is this has just been interesting to watch. And as I have been as you will attest to, uh, Gary, I have been saying you think this is something today. Just wait. Bob Chapek, he's he's ready to go. He, from what I'm hearing, rumors that have been circulating, Bob Chapek and the current board of Disney are ready to execute their plans. Uh, General it, uh, Order 66. General Order 66. <laughs> and... Part of this, there are some people that are on the chopping block right now that even I have been surprised. Okay. Um, well, we heard about, uh, you know, the rumor going that Bob Iger is on the chopping block. Yes. They're going to, no, no. They're going to lay blame for all of this at his feet. He's getting sacrificed. And from what I'm hearing, it's not just blaming him, they're taking away all that perk money that they gave him. Back when he retired, he's getting a lot of that taken away. So uh, there's some serious, serious business. They just well, he had let, their business. He let Kathleen Kennedy do that stuff. And I get it. I respect the way Disney sort of lets these companies, when they buy them, you have a chance to run business their way. But the problem was there's a huge difference between Kevin Feige, who was vetted when he took over, and Kathleen Kennedy, who was not vetted by anybody, not yeah. even George Lucas. She was only brought in for one reason, and that's because uh, George Lucas expected her to have it back. Yeah. Because of their long-term relationship. And it was everything but that. Yeah. And, and so it now has, it, it's, it's brought us to where happened. we are. Yeah. One disaster after another. Um, and and again, I will, I will tell all those people. I get it. I look for everything that she's done. I still respect Kathleen Kennedy's career. Okay. Yeah. On paper, she seemed like the perfect person for the job. But even by her own standards, meaning wanting to bring in more women and people of color, she's not done everything that she said she, she was going to do. Yeah. I've said before, you have had five Star Wars films made since she's been the head of Lucasfilm under Disney. None of those five have a female director or a director of color. None. There's no explanation. This is not one of those situations where, well, it was, uh, no, you're running the show now. You could have hired anyone you wanted. She talks out both sides of her mouth. Um, and, and it's unfortunate because she should know better. And on top of that, two of your movies were films that ran into, to, to, in, into problems financially because you had to refilm. Ro both Rogue One had to reshoot a good portion of the third act. Um. And uh, Solo had to be basically completely refilmed. 
yeah, they, they wanted to get rid of the happy ending. Uh, they wanted a down ending, which I get. Uh, I yes. enjoyed Rogue One. Because uh, yes. a lot of the footage that we saw in the trailer wasn't in the film because of that. Uh, yes. But I think in the end, it worked. I will argue that Rogue One worked. Where mm -hmm. it didn't work, where her failure was coming through in big, bold letters was uh, Solo. Uh, I mean, yeah. now agreed, Solo paid the price of um, the sins of Ryan Johnson. But the fact a is, little bit, is... A little bit. A little the bit. The fact is that film would have done better financially if she hadn't fired the directors. Almost the entire shooting schedule was already mm -hmm. almost done, and they had to go back and, and shoot a majority of the film mm -hmm. again, uh, with Ron Howard. Now, she hired those directors. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, in the old days, in studio days, the old studio days, she'd have been shit canned for hiring those guys. If there was any problem, whether they fired those directors or not, she would have been the first one gone. Mm -hmm. And this is where Disney messed up. They should have should have cleared her out. I don't care what her contract was. They should have shit canned well, her because she was not good at that job. And when you go mm -hmm. back to her career, you look, never in the history of anything she's ever done comes close to explaining how she would be the right person for this job. Nothing. Yeah. Um, so and, anyway. and it's unfortunate because, again, as I said before, on paper, it just seems like, hey, you know, she should be doing a lot better. And she hasn't been. And... The, the, the thing about The Last Jedi and the reason why that was such a bad thing for her, I get people who say they like it. I'm not talking about whether you like or dislike. In this particular instance, she was allowed to basically do whatever she wanted for that movie. So that film is a complete distillation of what she wants to do. She was given free reign to make that movie any way she wanted. Now, from a corporate point of view, you're talking the next to last movie to the end of the Skywalker saga. Yeah. And this hammers in the point that she was not a storyteller. She's not a creative. Nope. Because why would you make all these dramatic decisions before ending an entire nine episode movie saga? They ended the trilogy in episode two. <laughs> so, but okay. Um, so anyway, the big news, once again, uh, heads are already rolling over at Warner. Yeah. Uh, we expect to see more. I made a joke earlier when we were talking with uh, Andre and, and Mikey, uh, Mikey Sutton, uh, and Andre over at uh, Midnight's Edge, that uh, I, I have this image in my head of a bunch of hooligan teenagers with a baseball bat taking out a row of uh, uh, mailboxes. That's what I see happening at Disney and Warner Brothers. Just, uh, <laughs> so, but, um, I, I look at it more like Jason Voorhees. You know? <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That was really good. I actually <laughs> quoted you on our, our group page uh, for having said that. I thought that was a really good one. Yeah, it's like uh, basically Warner Brothers is Crystal Lake. And uh, Jason Voorhees has come in to say hello to the staff. <laughs> I, I think I wrote, cha, 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 kill, 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 kill. <laughs> so, look, it, it is never, look, I don't try to celebrate people losing their jobs. Look, man, I'm just I, saying that. I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for anybody that's getting fired <laughs> from Warner Brothers or Disney. Because they're just some of the worst hacks I've ever seen. How they got jobs, I'll never know. And I look forward to seeing the heads fly. I'm sorry. Schadenfreude <laughs> over here, buddy. Schadenfreude. With that, uh, hey, guys, please become a patron of our show for as little as just $1. Address is down below, patreon.com forward slash pop culture minefield. And remember to like and subscribe to the show. We really appreciate you guys watching. And with Follow that. Follow us on Twitter. And on Instagram. Heck yeah. What the hell? What, are, what you got to lose? And we got a private group on Facebook that if you want to join, just contact us through the public page, which is at facebook.com, Pop Culture Minefield. 
And uh, with that, that's Keith over there. And that's most definitely Gary. And we're not going to get fired from Warner Brothers. <laughs> and we're out of here. Get off our lives. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Pop Culture Minefield. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. Remember, you can find us at Pop Culture Minefield on both Facebook and Instagram. Thank you again.